Hello everyone. Welcome back to Simply Learn. In today's video, we will discuss everything you need to know about CSS positioning. By the time this video is over, you will be able to position the elements in CSS like a pro. So let's get started. First, let's cover the theoretical part. Here, we will discuss what is CSS position property and its different types. After that, we will jump to practical example to learn how to work with these properties. So let's get started. So what is the CSS position property? The CSS position property allows you to define the position of an element on a web page. The top, right, bottom and the left CSS position properties are used to determine the final location of the element. There are four values that you can use to set the position of an element on a web page. They are static, fixed, relative and absolute. Using one of the four values above, you can specify how an element should be positioned. You can also use the top, bottom, left and right properties to further define the element's position on a page. So let's discuss each of the properties individually. CSS Static Position This is a by default position for HTML elements. It always positions an element according to the normal flow of the page. It is not affected by the top, bottom, left and right properties. It is important to note that having a static position is the same as not setting the position property at all. The next is CSS fixed position. The fixed positioning property helps to put the text fixed on the browser. The fixed text is positioned relative to the browser's window and does not move even when you scroll the window. The next is CSS relative position. The relative positioning property is used to set the element relative to its normal position. The relatively positioned element behaves the same way as a static element, except that it is now subject to the values of the four other CSS properties. We will discuss each of them with more detail in examples. Now there is CSS absolute position. The absolute positioning is used to position an element related to the first parent element that has a position other than static. If no such element is found, the containing block is HTML. With absolute positioning, you can place an element anywhere on the page. Now let's move on to the example to understand each of the properties better. To demonstrate the properties, I have the simple example set up. Currently, we have three elements with just basic coloring style. We have not applied any position style to them. Now let's click on this element 2 and inspect it. Just go to the computed and type here position to see the position of this element. So you can see that currently the position is static. Static is the default value of all the elements of the page in starting. The next position we will see is the relative position. It works almost in a similar manner to static. If you go here and change the position to relative, You can see nothing changes. Relative act is the same as static with the only difference is that the relative allows you to change the top, left, right and bottom of this element. Let me show you an example. Now if we change here to left 20 pixel and refresh, you will notice the elements move itself to a 20 pixel from the left. Let's set the top to 10 pixel as well. You can see the element has moved 10 pixels from the top and even overflows the element below. This is because relative position when applied with the top, right, left and bottom actually takes that element out of the document flow. So let's just reset it. Next property we are going to discuss is absolute position. And this property gets well along with the top, right, left and bottom. So let's make this position to absolute. And you can see the changes made due to this by just saving.
the absolute value completely removes the element from the document flow. This is useful when you want a particular element to be a specific position but you don't want to disturb the other element's positioning. Absolute position positions the element inside of some parent container that it can reference. Now just sh let's shift the top to 10 pixels. You can see the movement of this element. The absolute position always position the element inside some parent container that it can reference to. Now if we change the here body position to relative, now the this navbar will position the element according to this body. So if we go here and refresh this, you can see that this 2 is in its relation to with this container. And this is where relative is very useful. Next is fixed positioning, which is very similar to absolute positioning with some differences. So let's change this to fixed. And just save this. Now you can see it completely ignores this relative positioning and goes entirely at the top. This is because fixed position elements are always fixed based on the entire HTML element. It has nothing to do with the parent elements. One unique feature of the fixed element is they stay in the same place when you scroll. Let's make the height here to 200 vertical height. Now if you scroll down, you will see that the element 2 will stay on the same position. See, the two elements stick to the same position. But absolute does not work that way. When you change this here to absolute, you can see it does not stay at, at the top now. This is one major difference between absolute and fixed. So that's it. You can see the working with the CSS position super easy. With the good amount of practice, you can position the elements like a pro. I hope you liked this video. Do leave a like and post your doubts in the comment section. Thank you and keep learning. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.